special episode of Media Club. I'm your host today, Alec Bobko, and joining me are a group of hell divers, Jordan Deeb, Adam, and Brayden. How are you all doing tonight? Good, man. I'm a little disappointed that we have to be doing this and not be spreading democracy. The automatons are taking over the Western Front and we're losing. Man, it's got a good point. We got, like, you know, we got to get out there, send our best soldiers, and you know it's us. And yet we're here. You know, oh, yeah. we're out here making the the big calls up here. We're sending, the, spreading the word of the liberation to get more fighters out there because this we is our, need this is a recruitment more fighters. video. <laughs> is there a high school nearby you could go to and like, yeah. recruit some dumbass 17 year old you just like we play like a 30 second clip and it's just why like being a hell diver is so badass and it's just like yeah. it'd be so awesome i can oh, see yeah. it now well before we get further into this uh if you're just quick promote our interesting madame web podcast that jordan and i recorded <laughs> friday night <laughs> very fresh it was fresh off the the thoughts man Let's oh go. yeah we we literally saw the movie and it's like we were going to record saturday the next day to kind of let things settle but it's like no this was so bad we just needed to just get it done really? get yeah. it get it over with that's fair i have Rip not heard anything good about it aside from the yeah. fact that sydney sweeney's in it <laughs> best part of the movie man yeah. best part of the movie. <laughs> all right but that's enough about that because this game is all about squashing bugs, not being the heroes, the bugs being heroes. So for those of you wondering, what is Helldivers 2? This is straight from the Steam page and the developers. Helldivers 2 is a third person squad based shooter that sees the elite forces of the Helldivers battling to win an intergalactic struggle to rid the galaxy of the rising alien threats. From a third person perspective, players will use a variety of weapons and stratagems, like turrets, airstrikes, etc., to shoot and kill the alien threats. Players can also aim down the sights for a more accurate first-person camera view. Combat is, an, is accompanied by frequent sprays of blood and dismemberment as players exterminate the alien forces or players and squad mates are hit by environmental explosions or friendly fire. Enemy encampments and battlefield environments depict bloodstains and dismembered or corpses. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a third-person shooter with tower defense mechanics. Yeah, yeah that, that, that feels right. And it's been so fun. Oh, oh yeah. And before we get for it's on uh, PS5 and PC, uh, and it's only $40 and has cross-platform play, play. So you can get, even get more players on that. But we need, we need those Xbox. Or Xbox players. Oh, yo, he called them Xbox? No way. Oh, no. Get oh my God. Get I, as I, an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't pronounce the last X. That's actually the so. sheeps that play video games, the Xbox. Exactly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I always yeah. love seeing the TikToks when it's like the Xbox players waiting to like get in. And it's just like the Halo Wars like trailer. And it's just like all of them, like all the Spartans <laughs> in line, like just mm -hmm. ready. Oh, yeah. Well, they have experience with the Covenant. I mean, that, that makes them perfect for Helldivers. Right. <laughs> the covenant the the locust swarms also like left for dead so they're used to working in groups of four like come on they, man we need them we're getting our asses kicked out there <laughs> yeah. especially yeah. by the automatons for real <laughs> all righty now for our experience with the game uh for your first question uh does anybody have any prior experience with the original hell divers game i do same here Ooh. I do not. This is my first time with the franchise. So Neither I guess, do I. Yeah. Uh, Adam, why don't you uh, kick us off with uh, what your thoughts were with the first game? Oh, man. So the first game was coming out, and we saw the uh, the trailer, and it's all like, oh, you're going to kill your buddies if they don't lay down. I mean, my friends, when we work at GameStop, this is how long ago that was. <laughs> no one else how old I am, but that was when I was younger. Um, <laughs> and we're like, oh, yeah, that sounds perfect. Let's just do this and give each other grief and, and do all that. So we played a good amount of Helldivers 1. Um, had a great time. Uh, there's a lot of things about that game that show up in this game, too. It's funny having nostalgia for a thing that you haven't thought about in nine years. But the whole, like, mm -hmm. you're going to drink Liberty and all that. And the, and I'm like, oh, this is all exactly from the first game. That's wild. Um, and I think the changes they made to the sequel are better. Because, like, the first game, it's like a top-down, isometric kind of a thing. And oh, it felt smaller budget, for sure, because it was, like, a, a smaller game. Uh, and this one just feels like they had more time and more money to, like, make a bigger version of the first game and that's exactly what it is and this is two is definitely an improvement basically in every way from one 
But one, the fundamental idea was already in one and it was already good. So I like that someone gave them time and money to like do it bigger. And mm -hmm. I feel like it definitely yeah. worked out. So Very I've good. only seen like some gameplay and, and screenshots of the original, but this one does really feel like they went, hey, make this more for like a general audience. Cause like I'm not here to talk shit about like top down or isometric view games, but they are not the like sellers the way just third or first person games are i think those are like the most standard version of games and so this yeah. one just looking like a regular video game or a standard video game or the average one like i think just i probably wouldn't have looked at this game a lot if it was like top down i might have like been like oh that's an interesting premise but it's not my type of thing mm. for sure and uh brayden how about your experience with the initial game the first one yeah like it was kind of like the same way with what Adam had, it was like, we basically, my friends and I seen it on like the PlayStation store. Somebody's seen it. And it's like the fact that it was four players. It's awesome. And you can like troll your friends. Cause like, you can like the friendly fire was, you couldn't turn that off in the first one either. Mm -hmm. The only downside. Yeah. Being like the top down, which in, you know, in itself wasn't like the worst thing, but you know, like coming to the second one, it's such a good breath of fresh air. And like Jordan was saying and stuff like the top down is a, it's a much harder sell than the third person. So I feel like with the improvements and stuff, but everything was there. Like there was still just as much sash. Like you're still screaming and running and trying to call in your stratagems just to survive. And it was still, it was still awesome. Uh, but yeah, so it's just basically kind of like, I look at it like how I felt when I was playing it, like hell divers two, when I was mm -hmm. playing hell divers one. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like the the first one, like laid the foundation for what this game essentially is. Hundred. Let me use the tired things that we've heard a hundred times. You know what? <laughs> Assassin's Creed One was pretty good, but then Assassin's Creed Two they really made it better. Yeah, no, dude. I had to bring it up, but it's it oh, is legit. It, like it is absolutely. That yeah. is the thing, though. That is a funny comparison because I was almost thinking like it's the difference between like the first two GTA games and GTA Three because it went from top down to yep. like this. Not open world, but an open area, third person behind the shoulder view. But in terms of like getting better from or from sequel to sequel or like game to game, yeah. it's everybody knows the Assassin's Creed one to Assassin's yeah. Creed two. Like everybody Thousand knows percent. exactly what you're saying when uh, you talk compare those two games. Yeah, it's it's kind of it definitely would feel like that. Not that the first one was bad by any means. It's just right. like Adam was saying, they improved on pretty much every aspect. So, All right. been great. so getting into Helldivers 2, uh, finally. I figured we'd just start off quick with uh, uh, the time we've put into it and some initial thoughts. So, uh, Jordan, how about you lead us off? Oh, man. I If I had to guess, I'd say maybe I'm at the 10 to 15 hour. I might have hit the 20 hour this week. I, I, I played till 4 a.m. last night with uh, <laughs> Shared Screens member uh, Jim Tasty on his, on his Twitch channel, of course. And, like... It has just been like, I'm not usually a multiplayer guy in general, but there was something about the marketing, this one from that like PlayStation showcase last year that was like, okay, there's something about this that like, I really like, like I think maybe what got me personally was like the, the, the satire aspect to it. And then I looked closer mm -hmm. at like the actual games. I'm like, okay, this has got like a fun vibe to it. And like the more and more they showed, I was like, yo, I'm like really getting sold on this game. And like in the last week I was r really like, there was people who previewed it and people who were talking about like what they expect from this game. And I was really watching. It. I was just like, fuck, like this looks so fun. And like, since I've started playing it, like every moment that I'm not playing it, I'm just like, I, I want to be playing it. Like I started, I went from having no job to two jobs in like the same week that this game came out. And I'm like, man, this game, <laughs> oh, this game came out a month ago. Like I would, I would be glued to my chair, just only playing this. You'd be level 50 already. Probably. <laughs> I would be at cap like straight up. But yeah, no, I'm having a fucking blast with it. And like part of it that's making it so fun is seeing the community that's gotten bigger and bigger each. I'm not even going to say each week. Like, I feel like it's been like in bursts of like day. three to four days, like little by little yeah. to the p point that like now I, it's half my tweets on the timeline I'm seeing are all about Helldivers. And <laughs> what's making it so fun is everybody talking about it, like in universe, committing to the bit talking in yep. character like i saw somebody the other day be like oh the robots aren't even that difficult someone's like yo this dude's a commie plot like people are just <laughs> <laughs> like straight up people are having so much fun with like sticking to the bit of this game and i think mm. that like i like maybe this is a, a different like 
on a smaller scale, it feels like another Pokemon Go where it's like there's just so much fun being had with the people that are in yep. this community and that it's just like, hey, who's playing? Because I need someone to play with. And like people are sharing their their opinions. And like a c- friend of mine who like I was like, yo, you need to get this game. He's like, I don't really know if it's in the budget right now. And like, I'm busy. I'm like, which I get that. I'm never going to force anyone to like buy a game. Yep. But he, he just texted me while I was playing an hour ago. And he was like, dude, I, I wish my PC was up and running right now because like I want to play this game. This game looks so good. I've seen so many memes and clips of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, de- it's definitely worth it, man. Like I've been just like selling it to as many people like i i got my yeah. old change today and this guy was asking me what i was playing and i was like you you need to play hell divers like it's it's for democracy and he's like what and i'm like don't <laughs> don't ask questions just go home and just buy this damn it. game yeah yeah or else super earth will fall and it's gonna be your fault <laughs> exactly and i'm gonna put it on him i'll go back there and be like Dude, you, oh yeah you really fucked us here <laughs> <laughs> and so Braden, how about you uh how far have you or how many hours have you gotten and uh some of your initial thoughts i'm about 14 hours in uh initial thoughts or it's it's great obviously i know it's a little rocky because i don't think they're ready for as much as many people to be on the game no. like mm-hmm. at all like considering they're probably rep- uh basing it off of the first one uh but i feel like those issues were not enough to push me away from playing the game and like spreading democracy because i was like i don't care y'all can like ro- cash me up on my rewards after i got like commie bugs to squash right now like you know you're out there running on the battlefield saying the only good bugs a dead bug and like fucking just like it's you know it's the, the hideous battles and yet it's just it's been such a blast like like Mm -hmm. like jordan was saying like there's just like anytime there's someone playing like i'm like i'm in you know like i was i booted up the game the other day just with another buddy and i saw brett was playing and i was just like i just hit invite and he just joined and i was like oh this is gonna be fun like we are now about to like get into some serious stuff here like i know oh but i love it i love the stratagems i love like having to really think about like your reloads where if you if you use the gun enough you can kind of count how many bullets are in a mag and like it's like it's realistic but still super funny mm-hmm. yeah and adam how about you yeah i think again the game's awesome and fantastic i think it's kind of like a perfect storm of like okay what it is it's a four player co-op game awesome fun have fun with your friends it's goofy it's not serious and then they're like, hey, let's put it on PC the same day, which I think obviously worked out huge, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a little too much because there's too many people playing it. <laughs> but like, that's a perfect game where success. Yeah, yeah I know. Right. Um, <laughs> that's like the perfect idea of like, hey, because like me, I was like, OK, I definitely want to play the game because I like the first one. I was like, we'll see how successful this one is. Um, but just being able to tell more people like, you know, you should really check this one out. It's good. And just having more people available is a good thing. Um, and I think even with the the problems it's had, right? The server problems. The only problem is that there's too many people. It's not like the game doesn't run or right. the game is janky. None of that. It, it is. It doesn't run because there's too many people trying to play. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I think everything here is great. Like it does. It is the perfect time, perfect place, the perfect kind of game. And it just, it all works. Again, I was like, I'm definitely going to check it out. I love the first one, but who knew it was going to be this kind of a popular thing. And again, like there's mm-hmm. just enough strategy, just enough. If you want to play on these hard difficulties, like there's enough challenge if you want to be there. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And even failing doesn't even really feel that bad, which I think they, they toe a line with that. Where like, you always feel like you're contributing and doing something, even if you just like jumped off of a mountain and a bug cut you in half as you jumped off. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and like when moments like that happen, I saw someone be like, like, the friendly fire always being on and like bullshit things happening like you get spawned in and you literally spawn into a literally the middle of a bug swarm and it's like it has what they called like the looney tunes effect that somebody said where it's just like it's so ridiculous that like you don't care that you're dying over and over again 100 percent. like the amount of times i've been dropped in and like one of the uh chargers has just immediately as soon as i'm coming up he runns through me and i'm like yep I've been concussed and don't remember what my family looks like, but we're still out here spreading democracy. <laughs> like, so or you get the uh, like the bile or acid sprayed at you from like a mile away oh as soon my. as you land and just instantly kills you. That one's straight up a one hit KO, right? Oh like, yeah, yeah, you, you're done. It's game over. Yeah. Um, and even the only thing that initially playing 
the idea of not having a traditional traditional level ups. It is traditional now of the level up system being like basically more like a Fortnite battle pass where you yeah. get medals and you put it into pages of stuff to unlock. Um, which even when you play it, I'm like, no, I get this makes sense because like instead of because you know you want you want progression, you want to unlock more stuff. But like if I only care about guns, I don't need to worry about anything else. Yeah. And you're still the same level you would have been if you got the gun. Just now you don't have to or you can just buy a bunch of capes and you still level up. I mean, I wouldn't only buy capes. You should probably buy guns <laughs> once in a while, but um, there's enough different systems and different like ways to buy things and progress that even the stuff that initially people are like, Oh, I don't know. This is pay to win. Definitely not pay to win. Definitely I don't not at all. No way at all. It's just like, Hey, you know, unlock the way that you want to unlock and then, you know, buy your jetpack for no reason and do all this stuff and have a good time. So I, I don't really don't have any problems with this game. Yeah. I think it's, really something or if you're ocd like me and you have to go page by page by page by page <laughs> exactly <laughs> man and every, I, I oh sorry go ahead jordan i was gonna say that like every aspect of monetization in this game feels so fair in a way that like i feel like a lot of these live service games haven't in a while where yep. like you can get the premium currency in game you can straight up just buy the premium currency with the prog- like the currency you get for just regular progression and then like even like the rates, if you just straight up wanted to like buy the premium currency is not from what I'm seeing super horrible. And then like it's encouraging you to both level up and spend on the free battle pass because the more you spend, the more pages unlock anyway. Like I just so, mm-hmm. so everything about it. I'm just like, I really have no complaints. Like I've, I haven't spent beyond what I paid to just get the game itself. And I feel like I'm progressing at like a decent rate. Yeah, that's one of the points I had for later, but uh, yeah, that's the it's definitely not a pay to win. The monetization seems fair, like 10 bucks for if you want to actually pay for the premium battle pass instead of buying the deluxe edition. Honestly, that's a fair price. Like I'm probably going to be buying that at some point um, just because some of those weapons and cosmetics in the premium battle pass looks really cool. Oh, yeah. Like, the, I, um, what is it like the uh the liberator or shotgun that they have in that first battle oh, pass yeah. looks unreal in the paid one. Yeah. Yep. Um, I guess some of my thoughts, like I've just been absolutely loving this game. Like this one, I knew Jordan was really looking forward to this, but for me, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, I've got friends that I know were interested in it, but it was just kind of one of those right place, right time. Like Adam said. And so it's like a bunch of friends in the discord were hopping into it. So I'm like, you know, 40 bucks yeah, I'll give it a shot, a shot. And cause I bought it on steam. So it's like, if I don't like it, I can just, you know, if I don't play it more than two hours, I can just do the refund and get something else or save that for whatever. And absolutely fell in love with this game. I'm probably about 16, 17 hours in right now and not looking forward to stopping anytime soon. No, not when there's, de- not when there's too many, too many democracy, too much democracy to spend. Yeah. To be spread, spread right now, like yeah, exactly. I gotta drink my exactly. liberty every morning to you know get all the juices flowing. Yep. So before we get into our, like our personal stories or just the chaos of this game, <laughs> like we a couple of us did mention just the skyrocketing popularity of this game, and it seems like every day it's just getting more and more popular to the point where literally just we're recording this on the 18th, and it just came out today that it had over Steam had over 360 thousand concurrence playing and which puts that in the top 25 of all time on steam wow passing gta 5 that's awesome i i think it's also the best sony uh pc game right correct yes Yes. best sony game period some would say honestly (laughs) those who love democracy would say absolutely (laughs) and it's gotten so popular that uh arrowhead studios which i believe i'm getting that right Mm -hmm. um they capped the servers yes. at 450,000 the weekend of the 17th uh, because it, so that way people just have to wait to get into the game instead of having the game just crash on everybody because it's just getting overloaded. And them running out of server space feels like a, Hey, it's all right. You fix this when you fix this man. Exactly. In a way that like, I feel like people don't do when like, you know, when GTA six comes out and specifically the GTA online, that's going to launch yeah. with GTA six. Like, I'm sure that's going to be at max capacity. There's always like huge, huge games that like, whether they're IPs or just properties that like people know, like for, for live service, they always have server games. Yeah. (laughs) Like this is different than like GTA or COD not having the server space. Like this is Arrowhead studios. 
not like the biggest in the world. Like if anything, like this is going to be the game that I think really skyrockets them. Like Helldivers is now, I guess, a household video game name. Not oh, necessarily yeah. to the to the levels of like a COD or a GTA or a Pokemon, right? Like stuff that even like your grandma might know. But like just to like people who are kind of in the know in gaming. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm-hmm. But so, also, just shout out to how yeah. communicative they've been with everything. Oh yeah, absolutely, and I love that they did the what the one point five XP bonus this yep. weekend, just to be mm-hmm. like, hey guys, like we're super we sorry, it. we get it, like we are work, we're busting our chops right now, but uh, in the meantime, enjoy some extra XP on us. And then in the yeah. game, it says that like the people who are making these er- errors are being sent to like a re-education. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> like, it's fucking hilarious. Oh, I love it. It's they're because they're they're not afraid to take themselves like they're not taking themselves seriously, but like at the same time they're working hard mm. and like making that making it better. Yeah. So, getting into more personal stories, like I just want to say how so like they started us off kind of just fighting the bugs, and then I remember some friends and I like when they finally did unlock the robot planets, we tried that. And man, that's a completely different game. Oh. <laughs> Those yeah, robots right. do not mess around. <laughs> the bugs, like you, you, you extract on a bug mission, and you're like, "I've liberated France. I've freed prisoners of war. I've done a good thing." You leave a you leave a robot planet, and you're just like coming out of Nam as like a twenty year old yeah. who should have been studying like liberal arts or something. You're just like, "What the fuck did I just see?" It always makes me think of that like Rick and Morty scene where they jump in the ship and just start oh, like, yeah. breaking down, and they're just. <laughs> what the fuck i don't even know how we got out of there like it was it just it plays in those harder missions so perfectly that you just like you're like yeah yeah, this is it's kind of hell divers in a nutshell at least on the uh, automaton side yeah Yeah. and i know like jordan and i we've played quite a bit together and so i was uh we like always like to start off on like a defend mission just because you get the smaller area kind of an easier one to start off on just to warm up yeah yeah um, I wish there was more of those because I was trying to look for one in the last round I played right before hopping on record. I was like, oh, I got to record in like 15 minutes. I mean, if I just find a quick defense mission, you know, those take right. like five, seven minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. Any, any little bit of XP we take. I actually did see an XP farm video that somebody put out. It was basically about grinding just the defend missions. Yeah. And so you get four people, all of you bring mortar sentries, and then you put it on level, like, I think, like the fifth difficulty. And it's like, because it's such a small area, all those mortar sentries can basically cover the entire area. So it just d- annihilates just all your enemies. Yeah. And <laughs> they said they got a fifth level mission done, defend mission done in like three and a half minutes. That's crazy. Damn. <laughs> That's what in work. Yeah. 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 And it got like five medals and like, I want to say three to 400 XP each mission. So. Yeah, just grind we'll, those we'll, out. Like you'll be yeah. level twenty in no time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Does anybody have any uh, crazy chaos stories, or just any 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 experiences you want to share with the people? There's some fun stuff. Um, I haven't done it because I played with another crew earlier today. Where mm-hmm. so the, you know you have this big uh, galaxy map, and you go to different planets and you know, spread democracy or whatever. And they have different environments and such. I like today earlier, the one we played was basically just like monochrome. Um, Everything was just like gray and or black and white. And then there was like red flowers. All the places was pretty cool looking. But uh, our friend was playing on the ice planet earlier and I never noticed it, but things that have heat work better. So like there's a laser turret or the laser gun. Oh, I did hear about this. Yeah. That's based off of it heats up and then it'll shoot out the thing if you overheat it. But apparently from a cold planet, it just lasts longer and flamethrowers take longer to charge up to shoot out on yeah, cold planets. It's like extreme cold. It's like a temperature thing. It's I saw that today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or if you're on like the desert planet, it overheats quicker. Just even faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Because so like finding out your equipment and doing all that. I mean, again, like for me, you know, mortars, I just like throwing down those Gatlin turrets and just being like, oh, yeah. all right, Guys, just lay down on the ground, and these guys will take care of it all. Because <laughs> yeah. that, I will say, killing your friends on accident, quote unquote, is so fun. Uh, I do it all the time, mm-hmm. um, and I think the Gatlin guns and and all these weird biomes. Like I didn't even know. I just found out today you could drown. You know, like, yeah, I just accidentally fell in a pool. And I was like, "Get out! You're gonna drown." I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> do not want to be here." Yeah. Let's go. Don't swim. Apparently, I 
learned that during the tutorial because I was just like, okay, they're telling me to go here. But what happens if I try to, like, I think when you, when you have to, like, sh throw the grenade into the hole in the training segment and, like, they have you behind, like, a fence, right? They're like, throw this. I was just like, what happens if I want to go there? And, like, I jumped over, but I drowned in seconds. Like, there's it's impossible <laughs> to even get to the land. And I'm like, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, at least they let you try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you find out the hard way, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw one video in the tutorial where somebody went to throw like the um, the orbital strike and it bounced and went back <laughs> on him and he's like, oh, "Fuck!" and then just got absolutely nuked. <laughs> yep, that's the worst thing I've had happen is for me it's specifically when I'm trying to like close the bug holes. Yeah, and I throw a grenade and then right as a bug's crawling out of it, so oh, then the grenade yeah. comes back right at me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been worst. it's been really spicy. Look what. The, I love it. Do you guys ever melee your friends? So you can friends? I no. <laughs> your your fellow democracy spreaders. Uh, because like we'll be like we'll be like looking at something. Oh, won't you get in there? And we'll like knock them into like the the nest, and you'll be like, yeah, <laughs> good luck. Like this, that's awesome. Maybe the second day that this game was out, I remember I was playing with I was I like I was playing with you and a couple other people, and I went up to the terminal mm -hmm. and I. I don't know why I thought the prompt to like look closer at the terminal was R3 and not X. So I just walk over, I click R3, and I had like that the big heavy machine gun. I don't even remember who's next to me, but I just go boom and they just like get knocked over. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think you might have a clip of that, you said. Um yeah, possibly. If I do, I'll throw it up if I remember. <laughs> I wasn't editing. But um the other clip I remember seeing just when we were talking about friendly fire, uh because it's uh, kind of a gag with a group of friends I played with is like who can do the most friendly fire damage. And um, the clip I saw was there's a launch ICBM uh, mission where you're basically just launching a nuke. And if you actually look, you can actually see the nuke explode in the mission. Mm -hmm. um, but if you didn't know, you can cause that nuke to explode as it's launching. Oh, right really? next to you. Yeah, and it causes twenty four thousand friendly fire damage. <laughs> Do you just like shoot it a bunch? I think so. I think they had like a heavy weapon or something, like a grenade oh. launcher or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember how they did it, but is somehow they got it to explode as it was launching, <laughs> <laughs> and they all just instantly died. Instantly died. Yeah, yeah. I shared that with Bo, and literally the last round I was playing this, and he was just like, "Yo, don't threaten me with a good time." Like he was like he was really ready to just kill all of us just to see if it worked. Hey man, I I I'd will I'd go for it because I mean science, worst case yeah. you're you're gonna come back down anyways you know exactly. And then guess what? All the enemies are probably dead. I would hope. Uh, yeah, that would that would be a real <laughs> kick in the ass if they uh if they live and you don't. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? They'd be like, no, nice try. That's they not they, the no, radiation they just, poisoning, but they're not uh, dead now. Right, well, I was right. just going to say that it just changes them to all uh, Chargers and Bile Titans immediately. Yeah, they just evolve. <laughs> 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 oh, that well, be... that does remind me, though, talking mm -hmm. about all these big bugs. There's that mission type. I don't remember what it is. Reach, you just killed the massive bug. Yeah. Um, we've only yeah. ever done that once, and I think somebody threw something at it, and it something dropped and killed it immediately. Like we had this yes. massive. Yeah, it was, I, I remember it was a. Uh, I think it was just a reinforcement that somebody just threw, and the yeah, someone just, just came back. Him. Yeah, this uh, three hundred foot bug that was obviously going to be this big boss battle thing, and just like a dude's pod came through and killed it immediately. It's like, all right, well, that's the only time I've ever had to fight that boss, and same. we didn't fight it at all. <laughs> it was kind of pretty great. The yeah. pods being like maneuverable at the end and that you could kill stuff with it also makes like going back in so fun because i'll be like yo i'm dead but tag tag what you need me to drop on and i will do my best to do it because like it's 100%. that's the most fun yep. just you come up you're like what i miss and there's just a fucking corpse near you <laughs> and you're like yep you're welcome boys yeah, yeah. oh what's always the worst is when you trying to maneuver it but it doesn't let you for whatever reason because i've had that happen a couple times too where it's just like yeah nope you're just dropping way over here yep and yeah. you're just like, uh, okay, I guess. Luckily, we... it does show your things on the map, which is nice. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for the cooldown again. What's kind of like the hardest difficulty have you guys played on? Uh, I believe it's been hard, which I think is level five for me. Yeah, I think I've done challenging. Yeah, I know we were doing one earlier, and we 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 made it, but it was uh, it was rough. It, it, like 
it, it gets significantly like crazier. Like like Nick, I was playing with bad gal Nikki last week, and she's like, mm-hmm. she's like, do you guys want to see like a, a hell dive for fun? And I was like, I guess, yeah. And it was the most terrifying experience ever. Like it's just like immediate, like it's always hot. Like oh, the challenging's already tough. Like even with a full mm-hmm. squad, like once you get to those later levels, it's it it feels like this is like you're constantly under fire. Like you're constantly like running. Like there's no like. There's no time to take a breath, and it, mm. it's like it's kind of like really like amaze. It's an amazing feeling, but at the same time, it is the it's worst cool. feeling. Yeah. It's just totally like I don't know if it's been fixed, but I know what earlier this week the level six missions were bugged to the point that they were harder than the level nines. Even really, oh, geez. they were just like at an ins- like I don't know what <laughs> happened. I'm oh. not a coder, but what? What if whoever controls the difficulty scale at Arrowhead, right? Like, I, th- I assume that they have like a DJ booth with like little scales, and they're like, "That's level one, right?" Oh, yeah. I think it's yeah, how games work. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. right. They little levers. I don't yeah. know, man. They, the guy pulled the lever too far. <laughs> it, like the lever was supposed to stop here, and it just kept going. And he's like, "Whoops, I'm not." Or it broke it off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, but I don't know if that's been resolved, but like the idea that like the people just like, "Yo, I think we could handle level six and they're going into what's essentially a level eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because like there's definitely been times where i'm like how is this so difficult right now like it shouldn't be like this but mm-hmm. i mean you know you're, you're out there you're like well I, we can't do anything now well, so no that's something i love about this game though is that like this uh, the feeling of when it's just like you and two or you and another person versus a full squad of four like last night jordan and i were playing and we were both uh rock and flamethrowers and the uh guard dog rover and it's like we were just yeah. annihilating everything granted we were playing on medium because we were like, oh, only two of us oh sure. combination everything was burns great eventually <laughs> yeah. that, that guard dog is like essential is essential it oh is, yeah like rover is is the goat it is, like, until he kills you a couple times but like still oh, yeah. yeah um but I can see it on those harder difficulties where it's like you really need to manage like, okay, someone needs a supply pack. Someone needs to auto cannon and have the auto cannon like backpack to reload that quicker. Like it can, de- I can definitely see when you get to like those higher levels and the later missions where you really need to coordinate like who's bringing what. Yeah. 100%. I haven't even seen what they're like, but I would just assume that like once you get to like the sevens, eight and nines, especially the eights and nines, it just starts to feel like it's a like raid essentially and you're just like hey there's a meta oh, to yeah. this like what like we need one person to, to have this one person to have this and like we're gonna have to coordinate like and that's fun like because like it, there is points where it's like i'm not gonna say the game is like simmy but like they their focus is on like being a little bit more realistic it's like okay fine you want to call something in you literally have to dial a code and you're gonna have to wait a bit for it to drop down and i feel like having to coordinate with your partners is part of that you're just like no you go this way you go this way everybody get out of my way i'm throwing this like all of that is adding to the experience. Like everything about this game is put in there knowing that it's all going to add to the overall experience. Cause like there's moments where I'm sure they could have been more realistic or less realistic, but I think like they found that perfect balance. hundred percent. And I feel like it's like kind of like, you know how like you see like stone mountain 64 or whatever the battlefield guy, it kind of gives you like those vibes where you like, but you actually want to do it right. Where it's not just like mm-hmm. you can just jump in a helicopter or something. You like, you're like very you can have somebody who's like being very like getting as much aggro as they can so like you know when they're running at you like jack sparrow was when he was being chased they can throw (laughs) we can throw all of our freaking orbital strikes to try and just uh, defeat everything Mm -hmm. yeah we were rocking earlier uh with three eagle strike napalms (laughs) and it's like man just everything's burning everything's on fire (laughs) i love that it smells it's a great. Sight. It probably smells good too, you know. Like, oh, that's what I, I made the joke of. Oh, I love uh, burning bug flesh in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. off one of their legs, bite into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cooked, probably. It's probably exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. There's no space salmonella in this. <laughs> I guess before we wrap up, any. Uh, I mean, we got some other topics to cover, but any other uh, stories you guys want to share before we move on? Yeah. Earlier today, I remember that like we were all struggling with one of these giant chargers. And I was like, what if I tried to get under it to get the back of it? So I was like, I'm going to throw a grenade. <laughs> and as I threw the grenade, like 
the bug the ran in the worst direction, and then you guys ran in the worst direction. So I ended up just <laughs> killing you. And the bug is yep. free to go. Like, yeah. It couldn't have been any worse, but that's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just one of those things because it's the charger. So it's like he's expecting the grenade to perfectly go under, but the charger is constantly moving. Yeah. <laughs> so they do a yeah. good job of that because even like the big vials, you'll be like, all right, just, you'll throw like an orbital strike and be like, and you're, you're shooting it to try and like to kind of get it to where to you want, it. but it yeah. completely goes a different direction. You're like, there's there's no way. Like, I'm just wasting. I'm wasting precious company resources yep. right now. Like, yep. Yeah. That's why some of the higher level ones are just look insane. Like I was watching a video where they say they like their squad in higher level missions. They always bring like the four orbital lasers, which is like the constant one that's like constantly shooting. And then like, I think there's like one of the last uh, stratagems you can unlock is an orbital strike that like tracks to like the biggest target. Oh, cool. Yeah, I saw that one. There's also one that if you're like, if you're looking at all the stratagems you can buy, it straight up is like, oh, no, this is like a carpet bombing of a city where they're like, they're like, make sure no one's around. And then in the pic, like in the little sample video, these people are like up on a cliff and you see like several different facilities and first one gets bombed and then the next one gets bombed. Then it's like, this is like a chunk of the map. This isn't like a, a small area around me. Like, yeah, it's huge. As, uh, before we go any further, what are you guys favorite stratagems? Uh, I'd say Rover for sure. Um, mm. Of the ones I've used, I like the shield bubble. I think that's cool. And then Ooh, the I one, that one uh, I, I only got to try because of Nikki. She's like level 20, like five or something. Oh, jeez. She's Good put in her. work. Um, but uh, I like the rail gun as well. Oh, yeah, because they gave it that to us uh, last weekend to use in every mission. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, big Go fan. Again, I do like a turret. I like just having. So you fill your stratisms with just turrets. So it's like I have the machine gun Ooh, turret yeah. and the Gatlin turret, and here's a minefield. And it's just like, well, the bugs are gonna come up this way. So let me throw all three of those over in that direction. Yeah. And just like you just stand there and you're fine. Again, don't let anybody get behind you, because <laughs> then they just all turn at you and you're like, all right, well, the guys were dead. I'm sorry, nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like the mortar. I just like the idea of like having something watch my back that could kill me, I suppose, at any moment. But it's mm -hmm. nice being able to focus on these 100 other guys coming at me and not have to worry about what's yeah. behind me. So there was a big fan of turrets. Yep. I was, I'll say real quick, story. that just reminded me. There was a uh, time I was playing with a friend of the show, Billy the Door, and uh, we were just doing another you know two-man mission, nothing too crazy, and it, we got to the extraction point. I'm like, okay, we got here. It's clearly going to come from this way. Put our turrets down that way, and uh start the extraction and nothing's really coming nothing's really happening and then all of a sudden i just get gunned down by a turret that just turned around because i didn't realize they were coming from the exact opposite direction <laughs> <laughs> and it just said killed by billy the door it's like wait what how you didn't kill me it's like this turret did <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> but it was just one of those things like it it was so obvious it's like oh yeah here's like the one of two entrances <laughs> that they could come in and of course we set up all everything in the one and they came the <laughs> other one that's the fun throwback to the first one because you would there was a button to go prone so in this when you throw down a turret it tells you like just go prone like dive prone and you won't get hurt because it's above above your head mm, so yeah. i like how they bring that little old the little old the throwback nod, from the first yeah. game in there yeah, yeah yeah um do i have time to tell like one quick story oh of course we got yeah we still got time Okay, uh, it was just about the mines because you reminded me. Like I love so what I did one time just for the Green memes mine. is I threw it right like on the extraction pad, and so he spit out all the mines. So it's like, all right, boys, uh, good luck. Uh, you know, if you can make it, you're in. <laughs> you know, like just because those things are so deadly, man. Like sometimes you forget about them, and then you're oh, just yeah. running away, and all of a sudden you you see it as you you're stepping on light. it, and it's yep. you're gone. Yeah. And I'm like, ain't no way. <laughs> or you're in the snow planet and they just hide underneath the <laughs> yeah. snow. It's that's the worst, but it's so know. funny. I remember earlier today, like when some of us were playing, it was like, "Oh, we're, throw this here, throw this here," and then like one of the like enemies never came through the side. We threw the mines in, but that was the way we had to exit. So it suddenly, just became <laughs> like right, everybody just stay to the left. Like everyone I've been with, it's like, okay, we're we're trying to help, we're doing the best. You know, there's slip ups. 
you sound like you guys are like a frat boy and like you're hazing the new guy. You're like trying to get to the extraction. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. pretty much what you got to do, man. It's, it, you know, it's uh, getting their sea legs, you know? You yeah. Gotta... See, it's a rite of passage. Um, exactly. It, regular minds is one thing, but man, you really want to take it up? Make them incendiary minds. Ooh, good yeah. point. Good point. Again, everything burns. That's right. Yeah, oh. that flamethrower does not mess around if you uh, <laughs> uh, get too many of them in a close proximity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, a couple of my favorite, like I, the two I've been rocking almost every single mission, uh, the mortar sentry and then the napalm eagle strike. Like those nice. things just mm-hmm. constantly just come in clutch. Yeah. Since I unlocked the the watchdog and I've been specifically using the laser one, that one's become like a staple because like oh yeah it's just literally an extra thing watching your back and it's also good at like because it auto rotates i'm like oh i know where the enemies are coming from or like it'll literally watch my back when i can't Mm -hmm. um the machine gun was the one that i'll say i've used the most in terms of the heavy weapons because like for my regular weapon for a while i was doing the the shotgun and now i'm doing the other shotgun but like it fires a little bit more like an assault rifle it's a really good middle ground but when i just want like firepower i've been doing machine gun or flamethrower and like those ones I've really just um, like, is I, the machine gun we start with? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that strategy. Yeah. And that one I've really enjoyed. And then like I was using the sniper for a bit and I really like the sniper. I just haven't found like missions where they're useful. Like right. where it's useful to have a sniper. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know you could turn up the RPMs on the machine gun? Mm-hmm. Not for the longest time. I just found that out like a day or two ago. I think it's what you hold the reload button. Yeah, you hold yeah. yeah square on if you're playing on ps5 and like some of that like we talk about like how this game has blown up mainly from i guess more word of mouth than necessarily like sony's marketing or anything oh yeah part of the fun has been like finding these things out as well where it's like oh i heard from someone yeah you can increase the rpm by doing this yesterday when i was playing with with brett i i showed them that no when you see these little like blue things you have to blow them up and there's stuff inside like they didn't know that so like it just the word of mouth of this game both in terms of just it being fun and like what you can do for the actual players like it's straight up like oh you know there's you could do this if you put, use strength on the truck in viridian city or whatever like it, right. it like it's got those playground rumor vibes but like more See, it's just i don't yeah. know how to explain it but like that's always <laughs> right. so fun where it's like I, oh you're discovering stuff as you go which something i asked if people don't know uh what jordan mentioned about blowing open the doors um and some of the points of interest you'll get like points where you have to like go down a little trench and you see this container uh not the ones with the two buttons but it's just like a almost like a storage container and you'll see like kind of like some ammo or some grenades or stims kind of uh, uh by it but if you use a grenade to blow the doors off a lot of times there'll be requisition slips metals super credits so ever since learning that i think i saw that on either on twitter or tiktok and and it was just one of those things like I, i've been getting so much metals and uh super credits that way Mm-hmm. i have i don't know if i said this earlier but i have like i have not bought a super credit and i'm already like 70 percent of the way to be having enough to buy the full uh yeah the, the better uh, oh nice battle pass. premium battle pass yeah like yeah. i i should be able to buy that without having to like actually spend real money and that's exciting and that's i awesome. i love that when games do that because it's just like hey if you put time in and invest you get a lot of these rewards just by natural progression but if you want to buy it, go for it. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. really like that. I like that it, it gives you that opportunity. It's probably one of like the when I see that in a game, I'm like, oh, they they actually care. Yep. Yeah. And speaking of caring about the game, uh, for your last thing before we wrap up, uh, what we want going moving forward, um, I think, or just to get give you times your guys some time to uh, think of what you're wanting. Well, um, Mine, like I know they kind of have talked about it, but I think a roadmap of like upcoming content, I think that'd be nice. Um, obviously, more servers slash server stability would be great. If not, which I mean, PlayStation could them all the servers that they bought for the factions game that got canceled, like 100%. <laughs> like just yeah, just hey, we have this half a million <laughs> server worth of farm that yeah, is now a waste of time. It. Here, Arrowhead, it's yours. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And then last thing, oh, excuse me. I want indicators of when I'm about to be blown to bits by Billy the Door's mortar sentries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Billy man... gives me the vibe that he just has good luck and just th- LeBron. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's like, oh, why, why'd you throw a strike on me? It's like, why were you standing where my strike was thrown? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh yeah, what a good. That's awesome. I do have one thing. I I think it would be neat. I'm sure we'll get it because, like, obviously we have the north and south regions of the map. I'd like mm-hmm. to wonder if those are going to be for different factions. Ooh, yeah. Or if it's just going to be like the bugs just move this way and like the robots. But I think it'd be kind of neat if we had like some sort of like flood style uh, enemy or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a, good, a lot of opportunity for more enemies. I, I did just find out earlier that the original game had a third faction that were like an advanced alien species. Oh, interesting. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe at some point they go, oh my God, this has happened. And it's like either in the North or the South. Totally. Something yeah. I think I can't remember if I saw or if it was just something that we had discussed, uh, and like while or while playing the game, but um, as the fact that they can hover over Super Earth is like, are there going to be like invasion missions where you have to drive some aliens out of Super Earth? If if we fuck up enough, maybe. I like to think that at one point we will have to defend Super Earth. Because yeah. like it's, I, I'm fe- oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say it's gonna be straight up like Mass Effect Three, where you have to go back to Earth at the end. Yeah, Ooh, and like I, because like yeah. I feel like in a, in a sense they're telling a story. You know, and like yeah, they have they have yeah. like two paths of like, okay, do if they defend this much, we we go this direction. And if they don't, then we can keep doing this. So like I feel like they have like, you know, this always sunny like board with all the strings, like, okay, if this happens, we can do this. <laughs> like they just can just figure it all out. And then it's just like, but they have every kind of scenario mapped out in a sense. Well, that's what's been, I think, one of the coolest things that like for the longest time, there was nothing from coming from the robot planets until yeah. collectively as a whole, like the fact that you can see where people are, how many people are on each planet, how liberated that planet is. And it's all happening in real time. And like the second the bug planets got fully liberated, they put out like a tweet or an ad saying that the the robot planets are available but it's not like jump into hell divers do today we're now it's like no they made it like a just like a, P- a psa from the government like again everything is in character in yeah. universe and like yeah. they're telling this story the robots are piece pushing by us piece back in real time and like <laughs> when, when more people started playing they're like all right man i guess these bugs also got these planets and they added two more there and like now we're, i think we're doing better with the robots than we are with the bugs and like it's so crazy that that's like a part of this and that's what makes it so fun yeah Mm-hmm. all right i guess any last thoughts before we head out uh let's see more factions for sure i think we have a third one from the first game maybe a new fourth one would be fun uh just continue to do the the battle pass progression system maybe actually have like seasons because ooh, i like that you know being like okay after 120 days this is our new again i don't need them to it doesn't have to be Fortnite. It doesn't have to be there's constantly stuff here all the time you right. never need to leave mm-hmm. But if it's like, you know, every four months we've got a new batch of skins, a new batch of uh, a couple mm-hmm. of new weapons or whatever, that would just be cool to yeah. like, you know, if they're feasibly able to do that, to have that to look forward to. Um, so I think, yeah, just like do what you're already doing, but just like give me more, I guess is like a right. weird way to say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, totally. Just keep it up, I champ think, or whatever. I think like in that same vein, at some point, give us like an ability to go back and get old stuff that you maybe didn't buy. Cause like the, the, the armor that was on the super store yesterday, I was like, Oh, that's so cool. But I'm really saving my super credits for the premium uh, battle pass down the road. I think I might want to get that one. So like, I want there just to be like a shop mm-hmm. of like all the old stuff. Totally. Sorry, that, and I, I like to hope that the battle pass, like the, even the free ones, at least be like, hopefully it's like halo style, like infinite where you can just go back yeah. at any point and invest your medals. Cause it's, they're just like, I mean, like, if it keeps, because A, that would keep me playing, because especially for people, like, when we play for, like, the month or so, and then kind of fizzles out, then it'll be like, when they do a new season, we go, oh, we can come back and can either yep. carry on or start working towards new stuff. Yeah, ever since Halo Infinite really, like, released how they do their battle passes, like, I would need every game to do it that way. 100%. Like, I understand right. for some games, but I feel like for something like uh, Helldivers, it's super feasible because oh, yeah. it's not like it's the battle pass is reliant on core game mechanics or certain things like it's just like just play the yep. game and you'll get you can get what you need yeah and i i don't like remember the exact quote or something but like they've talked about like how they just really wanted to not seem greedy with this stuff so this isn't like oh because it's a smaller game they made the battle pass really fair but maybe now it, it'll be ridiculous now that this game's blown up like no it's coming from the studio where they're just like people don't want everything to be a microtransaction or to be nickel yep. and dimed or an emote to cost five bucks. Like let's be really realistic with how these credits are earned, how much things cost. 
And but I think I mean, that's what makes the game stand out in like just a I mean, sea of life service games. Let me let me sweep the card a bit to get some medals. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I will say progression wise, like requisitions, fine. Uh, you know, samples, okay, that's a little lower, but that's also on you in a way. But the medals progression is a little slow for me. Well, granted, we have been playing a lot on medium, and that doesn't only give so many medals. That's so. true. Yeah, because like the higher you play, you do get more medals. Like I think when we did like uh, in some of the ones, you get like seven, nine, and like eleven yeah. or something like that. Like you get like you get like you're getting good. You're like ah, oh, like we gotta run this back. Like once you get to the higher missions, like once you're like leveled up enough, I think you'll be like, no, we have to play this one, or else I feel like I'm not spreading enough time. Yeah. yeah like i'm wasting time because like i've you know you're getting one or two you're like i have to because you see like on the 10th page it's like spend like a thousand medals or oh, something yeah. like that and you're yeah. like this is gonna take like potentially could take a super long time or if we just get good then it won't take it won't yeah. be that bad mm-hmm. all righty well thank you guys so much for joining us uh adam tell people where they can find you oh hey yeah i'm adam you can find me on uh twitter at adam gumby um, also on the gaming podcast, Responding Fire. I'll be at PAX East. So if you guys mm-hmm. ever want to do that and hang out, I will be at PAX East. Fingers crossed, maybe I'll be on the panel. If not, I'll still be there hanging out. So, Hell yeah. yeah, meet me there. <laughs> Let's go get drinks in Boston. I'm, I'm down hey. for it. And Braden. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash charisma. And you can also find me on, like, on Twitter and stuff at uh, twitter.com slash, I think it's like, at B Charisma because somebody had just black charisma. So, not too bad. Right. Yeah. Again, thank you guys so much for coming on. This was an absolute blast. Yeah, and until thank next you for time, me. have a nice cup of liberty.